How many of you, after receiving this amazing revelation, as the Lord, the Holy Spirit starts to connect all these dots for you, you're starting to see things in Scripture you've never seen before. Scripture's coming alive. You realize Torah is valid. The teachings of Yeshua have never been clear to you, and you're beaming with excitement and joy. And next thing you know, you start calling your Christian friends. I have to meet with you. We have to sit down. We have to talk. I got to show you what, what the Lord's really been showing me. And so you go and you sit down with them and you go around and you just know they're going to be as excited as you were when you found this. So let me get this straight. You're Torah observant now. That's fantastic. So now you belong to a cult, I mean a community. <clears throat> and that community, so now you stone people. Is that what you do? You walk around with a Bible in one hand and a stone in another. Is that what you do? How are we responding? It's a legitimate objection, is it not? What is written in the Torah? Stoning, it is explicit. There are particular sins within the Torah that require man to be stoned. And so it's a legitimate objection. How are we handling that? That's, that's what today is about. We're gonna talk about this. We're gonna talk about something known as the spirit of the Torah. The spirit of the law versus the letter of the law. And people ask, do I stone people? I say, absolutely. Yes, I stone people. And they look at me really funny, uh, some offended. But, you know, I say that, you know, most people say, oh, he's obviously being tongue in cheek. I only say it in part in tongue in cheek. I'm dead serious. Absolutely. Because I always follow up with this. The Apostle Paul did. And the Apostle Paul didn't just go out to stone people. He commanded, listen to me, he commanded Gentile believers, Gentile believers to go stone people. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, it is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and such sexual immorality that's not even named among the Gentiles that a man has his father's wife. And you are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he who has done this deed might be taken away from you. For I indeed, as absent in the body, but present in spirit, have already judged as though I were present him who has done this deed. In the name of our Lord Messiah Yeshua, when you are gathered together along with my spirit, with the power of our Lord Messiah Yeshua, verse 5, deliver such a one to Satan. Deliver him for the destruction of the flesh that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Yeshua. Your glorying is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? You get this guy, you give him to the devil. Go give him to the devil. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. And how true is that? That's why sin cannot be in the camp. Just a little bit. What, what's it say? Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroys much good. Moving on to verse 11. But now I have written to you not to keep company with anyone named a brother, meaning they're a believer in Yeshua, who is sexually immoral, not just that, but even covetous, or an idolater, or a reveler, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, not even to eat with such a person. For what have I to do with judging those who are outside? Do you not judge those who are inside? But those who are outside, God judges, meaning the world the unbelievers, therefore, oh, put away from yourselves the evil person. He just went to the Torah. He just commanded Gentile believers to implement judgment in the Torah and not just any judgment, the judgment of stoning. And we find this in Deuteronomy 22, verse 22. If a man is found lying with a woman married to a husband, such is the situation in Corinth, then both of them shall die, the man that lay with the woman and the woman, so you shall put away the evil from Israel. And then as you go on, it says they're to be stoned. This is the stoning law. The apostle Paul is implementing this stoning law with Gentile believers. See, here's where you have a problem. These people that say, well, the Torah, and this is, it's, it seems so it seems so refined and brilliant. Well, the Torah is for a particular people 
in a particular, meaning Jewish people, in a particular place, meaning Israel, for a particular period prior to the coming of Yeshua. That's baloney. And this flies in the face of it. So here's where we get into the spirit of Torah. Ask yourself, did the Corinthians literally stone this guy? No, absolutely not. They excommunicated him. They didn't stone him. And yet, and listen to me carefully, they 100% followed the prescription within Torah. They fulfilled Torah. They fulfilled. What is Torah? Torah is the will of God. They fulfilled the instruction. They fulfilled the will of God. Excommunicating this, this guy did that. And even though the, the literal letter, the literal letter wasn't followed for you hyper-literalists, the spirit was. Now, you can ask the question, I've been asked this, there's only reason I'm dealing with this. Why wasn't he literally stoned? You know, Israel was not living under a theocratic government in the first century, meaning Israel was not in, in control, utter control over its own people, let alone Corinth. I mean, Rome was in total, complete power. And, and understand something. This was the conundrum that the Jewish leaders faced in Yeshua's day when they wanted him dead. They wanted to put him to death. In fact, this is what we read in John 18, 31. Then Pilate said to them, you take him and judge him according to your law, meaning the Torah. Therefore, the Jews said to him, it is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. Now, some people actually read this that it's actually referring to the Torah as prohibiting us and that it's because Yeshua is innocent. That is not what they're saying. That is not what they're saying at all. What they're saying is, is that Roman law prohibits us from doing what we want to do. And so this is what's being saying. And just so you know, just to support this interpretation, look at what is said in the very next chapter. Therefore, when the chief priests, the officers saw him, they cried out saying, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, you take him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. Then the Jews answered him, we have a law. And according to our law, he ought to die because he made himself the son of God. So just so that you understand that before in, in John 18, they're referring to Roman law, but they flat out and call and tell him, according to our law, yeah, he's supposed to die. It was he was guilty of blasphemy, according to the chief priests. And so my point is here, very simple point. You couldn't just go around stoning people, but that didn't mean you couldn't keep the Torah. Actually, you could still keep it. You just excommunicate this individual and you will fulfill the requirement of the Lord. In fact, I could take this a step further that even when Israel was in total control of their government, this is what's interesting, and this is where the spirit of Torah comes into play. Do you know that the spiritists, the mediums, the witches that were in the land, according to Torah, they are commanded to be put to death. There's this, again, not nebulous, they're to be put to death. What's interesting, under King Saul, he actually excommunicated them. Interesting. He excommunicated, and it fulfilled the Torah. He was never condemned. For doing that, he would be applauded for fulfilling the Torah. You know, this is the one thing, and this, this is that we could go down this road for, forever. When people look at the judgments of the Torah and the things that, that it wasn't always carried out, these judgments weren't always carried out in the manner that we have conceived in our heads all the time. They weren't. Stoning, which sounds barbaric to the modern day Christian. Stoning is biblical. It's a good thing. It always has been. It always will. And that sounds completely crazy, but I want you to understand. There are things that are accomplished in stoning or excommunication. And number one is it delivered justice to the evildoer. Absolutely critical. You study the Torah, you know how important this is. Not just that, it, it got the leaven out of the camp. And in conjunction with that, it actually strikes fear into the heart of others that they may not sin. Now, that one is so critical. When people see judgment, it's just as I was alluding to before, when Rome would implement these horrific judgments upon the people, the whole concept is, is nobody else better do this. In fact, I want to just 
show you how powerful this really is. In Deuteronomy 13, verse 6, if your brother, the son of your mother, the son of your daughter, the wife of your bosom, or your friend who is as your own soul, your best friend, secretly entices you saying, let us go and serve other gods, which you have not known, neither you nor your fathers, verse 10, you shall stone him with stones until he dies. They are to be stoned with stones. These are the people closest to you. The devil is very good and very crafty at using people closest to you. Be very careful. Very crafty. Because he sought to entice you away from the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, so all Israel shall hear in fear and not in do such wickedness as is among you. That's stoning. That's the mind of the Lord is pure. He is not barbaric. He is merciful. He doesn't want to lose an entire nation. One more, and we'll close with this. Deuteronomy 19, 18. And the judges shall make careful inquiry. And indeed, if the witness is a false witness who has testified falsely against his brother, then you shall do to him as he had thought to done to his brother. So you shall put away the evil from among you. And those who remain shall hear and fear and hereafter shall not again commit such evil among you. This is when I say stoning is a good thing. Yes, it is. It keeps the lump pure. It keeps the enemy from taking over. Judgment is critical. And this isn't an Old Testament thing. This is a now thing. This is not for a particular period. We need this now. But this is just a great example of the spirit of Torah. Hey there, this is Mike at Corner Fringe Ministries. Thanks for watching our video. If you liked the video or it encouraged you, do us a favor, hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the share. And if you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button. Now, if you wanna watch the rest of this video, hit the button here. And if you wanna watch the rest of this series, you can check it out here. And don't forget, you can download the Corner Fringe Ministries app today on any of your play stores. Thanks for joining us at Corner Fringe Ministries.